Hello, and welcome to this webinar, Why Some Digital Publishers Win and Others Fail. My name is Manu. I am Operative Senior Vice President for Solutions. Thank you for taking the time and joining. First, some logistics. Um, during the webinar, in the, you will all be on mute and won't be able to ask me questions. Um, if you have a question, uh, or are having trouble hearing me, or are otherwise have uh, feedback, uh, please use the questions part uh, of the uh, GoToWebinar control plan panel and place your uh, question there, and we'll, we'll, we'll surely get to it um, at the end of the webinar. In addition, uh, at the end of the webinar, we'll do live Q&A, uh, and, uh, and I'll be more than happy to take your questions at that time. So getting started, um, the, 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 the goal of this webinar and the substance of what I'm going to be covering today is really about talking about growing and scaling digital businesses, digital publishing businesses. Um, sort of have a discussion around you know, what typically stands operationally in the way of uh, publishers uh, being able to, uh, to, to grow uh, and have, have uh, great presence in the marketplace. Um, what are the approaches uh, that one should be thinking about when you're thinking about growing your business? And, and what do successful companies uh, who have done it uh, think about uh, as they're going through this process? Uh, I wanted to sort of end the webinar by giving all of you, um, giving all of you uh, the ability uh, to have a set of tools uh, that you can use uh, internally in your own businesses uh, to see where uh, your publishing business is with regard to uh, some of the best practices out there. So first of all, let me just give you a quick background on who Operative is uh, and just so you have a little bit of context about us. Um, we're a company that's been providing uh, software and services uh, to help media companies run their digital ad businesses for over 11 years at this point. We have uh, over 250 employees across the world, including New York, uh, Sao Paulo, London, Melbourne, uh, and India. Uh, we have customers uh, across the, the globe, uh, and we support over 200 uh, media uh, companies. Uh, one interesting uh, aspect about us, in addition to the fact that we sell software to large media companies, we actually, given that we do services, we do over 100,000 placements uh, of trafficking monthly on behalf of our clients. So we have a lot of experience with uh, managing uh, digital ad operations, uh, in some cases simply trafficking, but in other cases doing a lot more, including planning and campaign management capabilities. Uh, across the board, uh, we, we manage close to $6 billion uh, of ad revenue uh, in our services and software business. So that was just a quick readout on who Operative is and our experience. So uh, to, to get started, I wanted to start with a, a basic sort of uh, premise about, uh, about scaling, which is really that companies really can't scale if they can't bring it uh, all together. Uh, and what I really mean uh, by this is that in order for um, for companies uh, to to do the things that they do, just do it more often or do it at a larger scale, they have to be able to function as a end to end whole. They have to be able to integrate their business process uh, and run it as a whole. And, and this is something you know, this this idea is something that's not necessarily novel, but uh, it is something that you see pretty consistently, not just in the media business, but pretty much in any kind of a business where uh, companies are attempting uh, to scale their businesses. Uh, I think that all of us uh, experience this uh, pretty readily out there in the marketplace. Uh, what, when you know something, something like uh, Apple has uh, been in the news recently with you know their supply chain in China, but the experience that you have with Apple when you order an iPad or, or an iPhone is is literally you go on the Apple's website, you, you place an order, uh, and, and then within a couple of days you start receiving emails uh, out of uh, China that your product has shipped and it's 
dive into Hong Kong and then it dive into uh, to, to San Francisco and so on and so forth. And, and that's really about having an experience uh, for the buyer that a Apple has put together because they have created an integrated process internally to drive that. They have bought the idea of going from a sale to delivery and billing into a integrated process. Um, now, obviously, all of you are thinking, yeah, yeah, that's a consumer product. Uh, what does that have to do with digital media? Well, the principles uh, that are behind and what's driving that uh, apply to digital media, and for that matter, any kind of ad sales or scaling of businesses. It's all about principles about, principles about supply chain management, business process management, um, a lot of buzzwords, but they're sort of mechanics of what that means, and then I'm going to go into a, a lot of that. Uh, today. So first of all, just taking a step back uh, quickly, when we look at media companies and digital media companies specifically, uh, and, and we sort of focus on those publishers, uh, sales businesses, uh, sales side, the advertising sales side of their business, obviously there's circulation and, and, and editorial functions as well, but just focusing on the ad sales side of the business, there are core four business processes that are going on. Um, there's uh, product and inventory uh, management. Uh, this is basically figuring out what offers exist, what products are there, what we're going to be charging for it. Um, there's the sales functions, you know, making the offer, uh, marketing the offer, uh, putting proposals, getting to contract. Um, that ad operations, which is all about execution and oper and, and making what you have sold successful, uh, and, and then finance, where you're essentially going and collecting. So literally a, a, a sort of uh, conception uh, of a product all the way to uh, being able to, to collect uh, against a sale on that product. Um, so this is at an abstract level, this is what it is. Uh, in reality, what this means for most companies is a fairly kind of manual and complex motion uh, from quote to, to cash. Um, so it typically starts off with an RFP or some kind of a reach out by the salesperson uh, to an opportunity and a process of trying to match up what a publisher has to what a advertiser is looking for or an agency is looking for. Uh, it typically goes into looking at, okay, do we have anything to sell in the time they're looking for? Uh, a seller will most likely fill out a spreadsheet, they have to get approval from uh, somebody in that operations, to reserve inventory, approval from other aspects for pricing. Uh, they essentially are doing all of this via phone, email, uh, Excel. In some cases, there there's certainly CRM tool involved. Uh, but generally, it's a very fragmented process. It goes from there into ad operations, uh, where once it's been contracted, they have to then go ahead and execute that. That execution typically is taking place uh, from taking the confirmed I.O., uh, putting all that information into some kind of a execution system, right? So this, these are things like ad servers, uh, DFP, uh, Google DFP or OAS or Freewheel or some kind of a homegrown system or an exchange. Uh, generally something that will be uh, used to serve the campaigns or, or buy more inventory uh, to satisfy campaigns. Um, and then they go into a whole campaign management process to make sure fulfillment takes place uh, to, to goal or to the contract. And that further involves pulling performance data and reconciling that with what was being contracted. Because most of the time, as most of you know, what you put in for execution doesn't always match up exactly what the contract was asking because all of you are trying to meet uh, uh, the needs of the client uh, from uh, and making sure it doesn't underperform, so you, you, you're sort of flighting or you're pacing uh, the campaign. And lastly, it goes into finance, who, who, who sort of scrambles at the end of the month, or depending upon the process, several times a month, uh, to collect all the data, uh, reconcile it with uh, the, the contract, decide what was appropriate to bill based on the agreement that existed, and then put the bill down. Um, so, you know, what that typically means in real life 
is a set of systems being used um, that are not necessarily all integrated. So, um, you know, th this is not uh, atypical of clients uh, that we work with and clients we've seen uh, that we don't work with uh, about what's happening in their businesses. Uh, they they're typically have a lot of uh, Excel, email, uh, especially on the, um, on the sales motion side of things. Uh, they might be, as I said, CRM systems, uh, but they're really being used for high-level uh, maintenance of the relationship and sales pipeline flow. In some cases, clients have created homegrown or uh, systems around CRM systems. But in general, it's 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 uh, it's fragmented. So this is, as I said, this is not very atypical. There's a lot of duplicate data uh, that needs to be entered and moved around. There's duplication of tasks typically, uh, and in general, um, the da same data is re-entered uh, minimum between you know three uh, and as sometimes I've seen it as as bad as five six times uh, into multiple systems. Um, so. The, the real impact of all of this is that you're fundamentally going to have a hard time scaling. And, and, and the reason is that the process is scattered, it's, uh, it's fragmented, it's hard to keep consistent, repeatable at a high quality, right? Um, and, and, and that all uh, happens because of multiple systems being uh, closed. The, 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 the overall impact of this lack of scaling, obviously, is hence the title of this, this webinar is, you know, you're you going to flatline or are you going to fail as a business because you, or, or you're not going to grow fast enough to keep up with your competitors. Um, another aspect that's important is that uh, across this process, there is a lack of transparency that starts developing, right? Um, and to deal with that transparency, clients uh, and companies, uh, I should say, uh, become more and more uh, sort of responsible for having meetings and, and, and sort of emails and more spreadsheets to try to create transparency among the different uh, operational folks that have to work with each other on a day-to-day -day basis, but also with the business uh, or the management or who are trying to sort of at a high level see how is the business performing? You know, how much revenue am I going to be able to make? Am I going to meet uh, my uh, forecast that I've put in front of our board? Um, all things uh, that, that are important uh, to a business. So, so the question becomes, you know, that's the reality, right? And uh, what can we do differently? What can we do better? Um, and what are the things we need to have in place to accomplish this? So taking a step back and quickly looking at uh, the requirements, and I've sort of hit on a lot of these already, but uh, w what you have are requirements in how, how you're productizing, you know, how easy is it for you to know where the inventory is. Um, the sellers in general want to be able to sell uh, quickly, accurately, uh, uh, with as little need for, you know, reaching out to people as possible. Uh, Ad operations' main goal is it's easy and reducing cost uh, of doing operational. As much automation as possible is important. Uh, finance is, is tasked and goal with, you know, getting money collected as quickly as possible. So they want to spend as little time sort of chasing down data. Um, and, and sort of doing reconciliation processes. And the executives uh, essentially want a view of the business at the top line uh, that gives them both, you know, how we've been performing and how do our we forecasting to perform based on what we've already done and how are we forecasted to do business in, uh, based on how the sales pipeline is performing. Well, that's really all the sort of detailed requirements. What, what other requirement that exists just from a holistic point of view is going back to this whole idea of bringing this together is these requirements need to be in some ways covering uh, uh, an end-to-end -end 
solution, right? So it, it, it cannot be a, 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 uh, um, a piecemeal set of uh, capabilities for each requirement. And even if they are, because you know in, inventory management is special and, and needs its own kind of capability, well, those specialized uh, capabilities not to be uh, need to be able to be integrated. Sorry, it need to be able to be integrated into that end to end motion. So yes, it's important to have a specialized ad server for video versus mobile. Um, yes, it's necessary in some cases to have uh, complex inventory management and modeling tools. However, if those are still operating independently and the seller still has to reach out to somebody to figure out what's going on, then it sort of defeats the purpose. So end-to-end, -end, integrated end-to-end. -end. And the last piece is this idea of the fact that uh, it needs to be agnostic. And, and what, what we mean by that is this idea that there is only one thing constant, which is change. And in that change, your the solution and the methodology you choose to have in place need to be able to accommodate, accommodate that change. That means that uh, the solution needs to have support agnostically for the type of products you're selling, mobile, video, display, performance, uh, pro programmatic. Uh, it needs to be able to uh, sort of evolve as um, the, the, the way uh, the systems being used to produce those uh, uh, campaigns are uh, changing and integrate newer ones, whether it's custom created, better uh, performance tracking data sets, um, audience systems that, that come out. So in general, the solution has to be able to onboard these capabilities in a way that keeps your business model and your business architecture as stable as possible. So, uh, you know, so what, what, what does one really need? One, one it, there's a simple somewhat uh, answer to this, which is you really need is an enterprise business platform. What you want is something that brings together the people, process, and technology applications into one whole. And uh, this, is, this is not new. This is something that uh, people do uh, today, uh, not just in the, the media business, but pretty much across the board. Um, ERP systems or supply chain management solutions are really uh, business platforms that manufacturers, uh, product companies like Apple, uh, car makers, all of these people use these kind of uh, solutions to really run their businesses. And media companies have used these kind of solutions as well. Uh, if one looks back uh, and walks into a New York Times, uh, you know, there's surely a solution for uh, print publishing that's in place that takes care of the, the proposal management and the trafficking um, and, and the layout management capabilities. Uh, now, I might be overselling what's inside New York Times, so, so uh, don't quote me on that. I'm just using that as an example. Um, but there are certainly solutions that have existed for media companies uh, for uh, non-digital. And, and there's digital ones as well. The difference, I think, is instead of using generic platforms, a, having a platform that's focused on ad business management, uh, specifically for digital media companies, is important because there are aspects of uh, digital media that are not really supported well by general purpose business management platforms. And that's not to say that the principles of those business management platforms don't apply, uh, that the general ideas don't apply. It's the specifics that are different. And, and in effect, what you should be looking for are those specifics being met. In some cases, your digital requirements might be such that you could use a general purpose system because your sales motion is just, uh, straightforward. Your prioritization is straightforward. In other cases, it's going to be a lot more complicated for you to be able to rely on um, a you know linear system of some kind or a print system uh, to solve the problem. So digital uh, ad business management systems are certainly a way to go. And, and there are clearly also room 
for systems that are agnostic even to the media that's out there and so one should be looking at those as well. So w what is the impact of a platform uh, or a business management solution like that? And typically they're enterprise-wide disciplines so they'll cover uh, uh, all aspects of your business, uh, certainly bring that whole end-to-end -end motion in play. Um, they're, they, they're automating the process uh, between the various uh, business as aspects eliminating duplicate data entry. Um, one aspect of most solutions is that they help you create a clean tie between um, various stages in which a contract or a piece of business operates, you know, when it's being proposed versus when it is sold and contracted versus when it is delivered and how much of the business was delivered and then how much of it has been billed and collected. Um, and, and so creating that uh, uh, data tie that leads to better enterprise-wide tra transparency and also makes it easier for you to do reporting from there, excuse me. And, and the impact is all about scale, right? So scaling is about doing, once again, I'm, I'm repeating myself a little bit here, but it, scaling is about doing the things that you do consistently uh, over and over again at scale, as more people get added to this, the process, they do it at the same uh, way and at the same scale. Um, so, so creating uh, a, a system and a process on top of that allows you to create better productivity, get gain operational efficiency, um, create that discipline for scale. What typically happens then uh, is that you, you sort of rationalize a lot of the complexity um, and remove the duplicate data entry, right? So uh, the platform, the particular systems that are doing things uh, uh, out there that are unique, like a CRM system or a ad servers or a financial app, they don't go away. They're basically augmenting the core platforms capabilities of tying your business together and they're helping you orchestrate that business uh, and so the core functions then become around product packaging, campaign management, looking at tra trafficking operations uh, and, and to the extent that uh, BI and, and data, business intelligence and data warehousing uh, are things that don't exist as internally and you've been operating off of just reports in Excel and those aspects are important um, as well. So this is all good, right? Uh, sounds at, at least good, I think. Uh, it, but in theory, what does it mean? It sounds a lot, lot of like, like a lot of work as well, right? Because we're, we're going in various parts of the organization and creating uh, change, uh, which in on all honesty is always a lot of work. Uh, so there has to be something in return that we get besides this whole idea of uh, scale. You know, how do I, how do I know I'm, I'm get, getting better uh, at this? So uh, the ROI, there is hard ROI typically uh, that we find with our clients, and, and it's different based on different clients uh, and where they are in their business cycle. Um, you know, typical things we see, clients are able to, uh, reduce the time for from you know weeks to days to be able to respond to RFP um, and, and not miss out on business. You know, 60% number is not atypical uh, for uh, that we see. Uh, on the finance side, clients uh, ha are able to um, to to fundamentally uh, reduce the amount of effort it takes them to build and then also the time to get to take a bill on it. Um, in general, you're looking to reduce operational costs and reallocate that, that resource um, to, to more higher value activities as well. Right? You, you, you're doing less data entry uh, and more validation and more optimization activities. Um, uh, speaking of the finance thing, we're gonna be having a webinar uh, next month uh, which is talking really about sort of the reality of what finance uh, can experience uh, when you apply systems 
um, like these. Uh, there's some real data that, that's going to be shared there. So I would encourage uh, folks to attend that as well if you're interested. Um, so uh, you can get ROI. It's great in theory. Uh, how successful is it typically? Right. Uh, these these uh, just in general uh, application deployments are fraught with uh, a lot of uh, a lot of sort of uh, adoption risk, uh, a lot of risk associated with uh, unmet expectations. So how does one go about sort of trying to get to successful? Uh, capability. It's a long-term project. However, you can f set it up in a way that allows you to to be successful. Uh, there, there are sort of five key things that we see consistently when clients are successful. One is um, having clear goals and objectives. Right? What are the outcomes that are most important, and over what period of time are those objectives important? Right. On day one, I don't want uh, data, we have to re-enter data here, here, and here. Um, on day 120, I want to have gone from taking seven days to create my billing to four days to create my billing. Whatever those metrics are that you want to be able to accomplish. Uh, one typically finds that uh, successful com companies uh, with this have executive sponsorship. This is a business-wide capability and initiative, and having sponsorship, meaning at a company level, companies feel that this is important to their success, then you're going to have uh, success. Um, participation, right? this impacts a lot of different people, this kind of an approach. And, uh, and as such, you want champions in the organization. You want people to believe that this is going to be better uh, from different parts of the organization and also different levels of the organization. Um, and I, I, the next piece is about, uh, I kind of mentioned this before, which is about adoption. It's, um, it's, these things are taking uh, work uh, which you did one way and changing it to doing it another way. Um, and that it's not necessarily that um, that difference is uh, uh, better or worse, leaving that aspect out of it. What you're working towards a, is a better outcome uh, for the business, and as such, you're going to constantly be looking at, you know, are people adopting the discipline? Are people sort of following through on these things, um, especially early on? Um, and, and then um, you you want to work with uh, a set of tools, technology, service providers who have aligned with your goal for this, um, if their systems and solutions don't have a path of fitting into your overall strategy, whether it's a business strategy or the system strategy, and being able to have those capabilities sort of flow through and integrate into to, to that flow, um, then you're not going to necessarily be able to be successful, regardless how much you want. Of course, it doesn't have to be true on day one. In some cases, some things have to be true on day one. Others just have to happen over time uh, on the right timeline. Um, so, you know, before I sort of uh, open it up for questions, I, I just wanted to um, quickly walk through a, a few things. One is that um, there are really three things uh, I think I would say one should do before ever getting into any of this stuff. One is um, know where you. Uh, as a publisher, as a company stand uh, with regard to your operational and business uh, uh, efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, what is it that you do today? How well do you do it? When does it break down? Uh, you can't imagine the number of times um, that we walk into clients and we ask them, like, you know, what is your error rate on uh, 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 trafficking of campaigns? Um, and there's no clear answer. Uh, and what I mean by error is how many times is something trafficked and then you have to change it at the most macro level, right? Do you have any idea? And if you could prevent that, you know, what would that mean, right? That's the next thing from there. So knowing exactly, you know, what uh, is happening operationally and business-wise is important. Second is, um, you know, sort of, 
this idea has, as I said, a lot of people need to be involved. So socializing and, and, and sort of getting, creating a set of people who believe that there is a way to solve the problem, right? Uh, and it might, might not be what I have talked about, but regardless of what you end up thinking the belief is, you have to have multiple people bought in uh, to the idea. And I found, you know, obviously it's, well, it's obvious. Yes, it is obvious that you need multiple people bought in, but they have to be bought into the same idea, same belief, and that alignment has to be there uh, associated with it. Um, and, and lastly is, is create a plan of action uh, which identifies key milestones and key owners. So this goes back to, you know, the success uh, part, the, the five things we thought were uh, important for your su success is going back and looking at that and creating a plan of action. So that's all I had. Uh, and with that, I'll open it up for um, some questions. If you, uh, there aren't any further questions at this time. I wanted to thank you all for attending. I appreciate your time and attention.